Welcome to the Cary Tennis Park in Cary, North Carolina for the 2023 ACC Women's Tennis Championship match between the third seed NC State Wolfpack and the top seeded North Carolina Tar Heels. Play began earlier in the week with the top four seeds jumping in on Friday in quarterfinal action. And only two teams have gone through this bracket without dropping a match, and that's North Carolina and NC State. Unblemished as we reach Championship Sunday in Cary, North Carolina. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Cary Tennis Park. Russ Thaler here alongside 2010 ACC champion with Georgia Tech, Irina Falcone. Let's start with the Tar Heels undefeated. And Brian Kelvis has created a juggernaut over the last 20 seasons, and this might be his best team of them all. What's been the secret to his success? His passion. I've spoken to a few of the players that he's worked with, and the fact that he's able to bring so much energy, passion, positivity every single day in and out on the courts, and he just cares so much about his players. He makes sure to talk about progress and process over the result. And when you have an undefeated season, you have to have some good tennis players, right? So here we go with the number one player in the nation right now, Fiona Crawley. She looks like she's just having a ton of fun out there because she hasn't dropped but one match this entire season. Been playing incredible tennis. This is the first time NC State has ever reached the ACC championship. How have they done it and how do they crack that nut that is the target? I think the biggest thing that Coach Simon has talked about is being a progressive and aggressive team. He wants to make sure that his girls are instinctive and in coming forward and making sure to really not think on the court. <laughs> Um, and the one player that has really stood out this season is Diana Schneider. She's been an incredible force, not only on the college level, but also on the WTA level. She's going to be playing main draw Roland Garros in about a month and just recently be top 15 ranked player Veronica Kudermatova just last month in Charleston. So it's going to be quite a battle against Fiona Crawley today. Dana Schneider and the Wolfpack of NC State will take on the Tar Heels of North Carolina. The doubles point, all important, will start us off. First ball, three doubles matches coming your way as we begin the 2023 ACC Women's Tennis Championship match. Greetings all, welcome to the Cary Tennis Park in Cary, North Carolina, as we await the Women's Tennis Championship for the ACC in 2023. Back in Cary for the first time since 2019, North Carolina looking to continue their undefeated season. A win on this day would be their 30th of the season. Meanwhile, NC State participating in their very first ACC Tournament Championship match. Russ Thaler and Irina Falcone, a 2010 ACC champ with Georgia Tech alongside. Here's a look at our doubles matchup, and oh boy, we got a good one at number one doubles, don't we? Absolutely. Dana Schneider just won three majors back in the Junior Grand Slams, and she's been playing incredible both singles and doubles, but they've got a tough opponent against Elizabeth Scotty and Reese Brantmeyer. A lot of wingspan between the two standing 6-1 and 5-10 restarting serve here. So here we go, three doubles matches. We'll start at number one doubles. Dana Schneider and Alana Smith Ready. for NC State. And this will be Reese Brantmeyer serving for North Carolina to start. And here's the deal, one set in college doubles. No ad scoring, which means that Deuce, the returning team, gets to decide which side of the court they want to return on. There are three doubles matches. The first team to win two of them takes the doubles point. Brant Meyer serving in the near court with the high Carolina Blues socks on was the number one recruit of the class of 2022. And she has made her mark already this freshman year at North Carolina. Great read there by Schneider. It's very typical when you see I formation. 
player usually tends to go into the middle of the court. Great target. Using that forehand well, lefty playing forehand in. I think it's a great play, too, that they're both starting to back, give themselves time to get towards the net and apply pressure. All right, because of the no ad scoring here, this is three break chances should they need them for NC State. for NC State to open up this ACC Women's Championship match. Three doubles matches going on simultaneously. You're going to be hearing cheers from all over the grounds here at the Cary Tennis Park. And we'll be checking in on all of these doubles matches because each matter exactly the same. You just got to win two of them to get that doubles point. All right, so let's reiterate the rules one more time. Three one-set matches, as I mentioned, played to six games. It's a regular set. Two out of the three teams, you win it, you get a point. Then in singles, best of three set matches, no ad scoring. Each match win gets you one point. You get to four wins, you are ACC champions. there by Schneider doing such a good job of giving herself time to get forward up to the net not really hitting a flat shot but really a little bit of heaviness on that backhand coming in that is different watching this than say a, a professional tennis player. There are no not lines people on these courts. Players call their own lines. There is a chair umpire. You'll see the players look up to the chair just to get sort of a, like an idea. Oh, was that out? Yes, it was out. That verbal confirmation. <laughs> and another fun aspect of college tennis, you do play service lets, which is always fun and has to be hard for Snader to juggle between that and WTA life. As you know, on the WTA, you do not play service lets, so you have to react a little quicker. Schneider really jumped onto the scene in Australia at the beginning of the year, going through qualifying into the main draw, winning a round, and taking a set of the sixth seed, Maria Sakari of Greece. And I think there were a lot of people who rightfully wondered why she's coming back to the States to play college tennis. What did you find out about that? Well, I spoke to someone that actually knows her quite well. And right now, I mean, Russia is just not an option for her. And she mentioned how her coaches have come through with everything they promised her. She's getting that opportunity to train here in Durham, but also play WTA matches. Super strong start for NC State. And points now for Two Love in the first set on the number one doubles court. She likes it so much that even after she turns pro, I understand she's gonna stay, stick around and train. This will be her training base. Absolutely, I think she's got great memories here so far and great training squad. Turn from Scotty, and here's a look at our first no-add point. This is our deciding point. 
Tar Heels as the returning team gets to choose, and they're going to let Scotty have another rip at this return. I think it's a great call there by Scotty to take this, knowing that you just won the previous point. You got to think that Schneider is going to go that lefty slice to the backhand, set Smith up at the net. And a break back for the Tar Heels. Great composure there by Scotty, making sure to keep the ball low. And another thing you're going to see in college tennis that you wouldn't see on tours, the coaches will walk out right onto the court, have a chat with their players, even in between, in the middle of games, in between points, even. Here comes the 6-1 Scotty to serve for North Carolina. Smart play by Alana, knowing that Scotty was probably going to cover that middle area. Going back behind her. For NC State, Schneider and Smith are their number one and two singles players. A little different for North Carolina, where Scotty's going to play in the number five position today. Here's the number two. Great target there by Schneider. Going to the Reese Brantmeyer backhand volley. It's typically the tougher volley at that. Spin live from Elizabeth Scotty. We saw just a little bit of everything in that doubles point. Yeah, that was a great job there by Scotty, making sure that she really got weight on that forehand lob there and just was too good for Alana Smith. This time with that low dipping cross court pass. She's doing such a great job controlling the baseline, moving the ball around, and really giving different looks to Smith and Schneider. He had to think she was going to go for a lob again, and then she came up with that cross court angle, did a beautiful job there. Sells long. Carolina holds for 2 1. On an absolutely picture perfect championship Sunday in Cary, North Carolina. Wasn't quite the same thing that we saw yesterday around these parts. The weather was absolutely treacherous. And then we had to move everything indoors because the rain just wasn't letting anything happen, including our broadcast. So they took it indoors to the indoor facilities of North Carolina. 
and Duke. But since teams can't play on their home courts, Carolina had to become the home team at Duke. And there, there I was. At Carol and there you are <laughs> at North Carolina with their brand new facility in I Chapel Hill. I wasn't cheering anyone on, as you can tell by my shirt. And Mark Lucero is <laughs> going to be calling the men's championship match. And Mark was over there at Duke checking in on the top seed UVA on the men's side. And I was I was watching Duke take on Wake Forest back in Chapel Hill. You were doing double duty. Got to see both indoor centers. No doubt. Terrific indoor facilities for both squads. Two banks of six at North Carolina. Uh, two banks of three at North Carolina and a bank of six at Duke. Let's go over to the number two court. And by the way, NC State has jumped out to a lead in both second and third doubles on serve with North Carolina serving at 1-2. So in the far court, Nell Miller and, uh, and Emilia Rietzky. Nell Miller for NC State won the NCAA doubles championship last year with Jada Daniel, who's no longer at NC State, but we're talking about a national champ for NC State. That's a tough combination. And they'll take on the second doubles team of Carson Tanglig and the number one player in women's college tennis, Fiona Cauley. And Cauley in the white visor on the left-hand side of your screen here in the near court is just a ball of energy. Singles and doubles. <laughs> yeah, we saw her dancing earlier before the match, but she's one of those players. She's going to make you work. She gets a lot of balls back, and uh, she can make you beat yourself on the court. <laughs> oh, sorry. Volunteer assistant Charlotte Madsen is talking with her North Carolina. Great job by Crawley, just making sure you follow that ball after she hits that first volley. A lot of players think, okay, that's a winner right away, but these girls are so fast. Nell Miller was ready to retrieve that ball so well. Still three break chances for NC State here to take a 3-1 lead in this double set. And a beauty of a return and a break of serve for a 3-1 lead for NC State at number two doubles. Fantastic job there by Rietzky. He's actually the player that clinched the match for NC State yesterday against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. And she talked about how exciting it is to be here, getting that opportunity to have a rematch. Beautiful conditions out here. Just 53 degrees, temperature's gonna go up into the mid 70s as the day goes on. Not a cloud in the sky, low humidity, very little wind too. Perfect conditions for top end tennis. And again, the depth from NC State, giving Crawley some issues there in the deuce court. I think with someone like Miller, who is just so smart on the court, and she knows how to read the game so well, it provides so much pressure for Crawley, knowing that she has to hit such a good shot.
for some stick to itiveness from the Wolfpack. That was incredible tennis there by Rajetsky and Quali going on that down the line exchange, but Rajetsky doing a good job with that last shot going more on the middle and really applying pressure and making the court so much smaller for Crawley. Remember, neither team has dropped a point in this tournament. Pulls that forehand return wide and now points for 4-1 for NC State at number two doubles. Wolfpacker leading on the third doubles court as well, 3-1. Two all at first doubles. And that return sails long and indeed NC State has taken a 4-1 lead at number two doubles. Just getting underway in the 2023 ACC Women's Tennis Championship match between NC State and North Carolina. is underway at the 2023 ACC Women's Tennis Championship match between North Carolina and NC State. The Wolfpack with leads on courts two and three on serve on court one. Here's a look at the scores right now with the Wolfpack up a break in second doubles and in third doubles. How huge, Irina, would this be for the Wolfpack to pull out a doubles point here against the North Carolina team that hasn't dropped a point in this tournament. I think the momentum and that confidence going into the singles, knowing that you have a little bit of a buffer and knowing that you're playing good tennis and it's not going to be a blowout like they played last time, I think it can only be positive for the Wolfpack. And now third doubles has moved to 4-1 in favor of the NC State team. Let's check in on the third doubles court for NC State. It is Sophie Abrams and Abigail Rancelli. And there's a look at the North Carolina three doubles teams of Riley Tran and Abby Forbes. And Abby Forbes, what an interesting, you see her right here, interesting story. She is the first transfer to come into North Carolina in the 20 year coaching history of their coach, Brian Kelbis. She is a Raleigh, North Carolina native. And she's coming back home after a stellar career at UCLA. You have to think that if you have the opportunity to potentially win an NCAA championship, team championship with your hometown school, you have to take it, especially with Coach Bryan at the helm. And this has been all Wolfpack so far here at three doubles. Same can be said at two doubles, 4-1 leads for NC State at both two and three doubles right now. And remember, it's just one set of tennis. You win that set and you win two of the three matches of doubles, you get the doubles point. First team to four overall points wins the ACC championship. So right now, NC State is in prime position to take this doubles point. The only time, Irina, this season, that North Carolina's dropped the doubles point was in their opening match of the ACC season against UVA earlier this year. Such confidence, too, being able to look over to the court next to you and seeing that they're up. It just gives you so much positive energy. So Abrams and Rancelli are threatening again at three doubles. Couple points away from possibly taking a 5 1 lead.
incredible point there by Miller Rizeki. You could see the number two doubles team. Just how Miller just does such a good job with following the volley and knowing where her opponent is going to be hitting that next shot. And meanwhile, over at three doubles, huge chance now for a 5-1 lead for NC State. Two doubles has moved to 5 1. And the Wolf Pack keep that pressure going. At third doubles and get the break for 5 1 at third doubles. So now the Wolfpack, a game away at second and third doubles each to take this doubles point. And Irina, this has to be stunning to North Carolina, not just that they're down, but how big they're down at second and third doubles. One of the hallmarks of the Tar Heels has been their depth. Fantastic job there, closing in the net by Ruzetsky. But you're absolutely right, Russ. It's been incredible the way that they've been able to win so many doubles points this season. But it's you're right, it's the way that they're losing right now in courts two and three that is a little shocking to most fans right now. Miller and Rieski with four match points at number two doubles now on the left-hand side of your screen. And there it is, only took one. And now NC State is one match win away from taking the doubles point. Abrams and Rancelli here trying to serve out the doubles point at number three doubles. But the team of Tran and Forbes are hanging around and now they have break points to get a game back and pull within two five here at number two. You know, Russ, I've always talked about two five being one of the most dangerous scores in women's tennis because just because you're down, it does not mean that you are out in tennis. <laughs> It can change so quickly, especially in these quick doubles conditions here. All right, that's one break point saved. Three more coming, though, for the Tar Heels. Job there by Tran, really getting around that backhand. Actually, that's her forehand. She had two hands off both sides. <laughs> yeah, it, it can throw you off sometimes. She crosses over like Monica Sellers this back in the day. All right, moments ago, this is the match point at number two doubles for NC State. And the 
team with Ben Miller and Emilia Rietzky with a very lopsided win over Tangalig and Crawley. 6-1 to take number two doubles. And now NC State with a chance again at 5-2 to wrap up this doubles point at number three doubles. On serve on the number one court with NC State serving at 3-4, but here's, here's where the rubber meets the road for the Wolfpack and the Tar Heels. It's at third doubles. Abby Forbes is serving at 2-5. North Carolina has just broken to get within this margin, but they're still up against it. was going to poach. <laughs> Pressure is all on North Carolina. Abby Forbes serving at Love 15. Forbes just caught the outside of that sideline. Riley Tran doing such a good job with making that volley just completely unplayable. But just great hands there by Abby, just in such a tough position for Sophie and Tran just getting it off the court. Gorgeous. Incredible play there by Rinchelli and Tran. Rinchelli just doing such a good job by seeing that open opportunity there, seeing that Forbes was by the baseline, but great hands there by Tran just making that extra ball. But just look at this little flick of the racket there by Rinchelli, making it impossible there for Forbes. Rinchelli got all the way on the outside of that ball to roll it off the court, and NC State finds itself perhaps two points away from taking this doubles point. And here come the match points at third doubles, and more importantly, a doubles point point for the Wolfpack. Fantastic job there by Abrams, making sure to follow that and seeing that Riley Tran is going to hit that short volley. Trying so much pressure to Forbes. Huge point right here. And there it is, the Wolfpack draw first blood against the top seed in unbeaten North Carolina. NC State takes a one-love lead 
in the 2023 ACC Women's Tennis Championship match. Irina, you mentioned talking to Coach Simon Earnshaw before the match, and he said he wanted his team to be aggressive. Well, the aggression was certainly out there in the doubles, was it not? It was very, very calm aggression, but it was so composed. I was so impressed with the way that they come out with such confidence, and there didn't seem to be much doubt in their decision-making today by the Wolf Pack. Well, in the sports vernacular, the term is act like you've been there before. Well, <laughs> NC State's never been here before, but boy, they are sure playing like they know where they want to go. Yeah, absolutely. And you can just see here in this match point, there's just no doubt whatsoever about coming forward, about applying pressure. And you can see Rinchelli trying to get the crowd involved. And you're going to hear a loud of crowd today. <laughs> well, look, it, both fan bases are within a 20-minute drive of this facility between NC State in Raleigh and North Carolina in Chapel Hill. And there are so many fans of both these squads that are here. You can see the, the stands are packed. And the doubles competition is over. And by the way, when something is clinched, it's over. The number one doubles court did not finish their match, even though North Carolina was up 5-4. It matters not because it's NC State that has taken the doubles point. And we have the head coach of the Wolfpack, Simon Earnshaw. Coach, congratulations. You guys are the first team since the opening match of the ACC season for North Carolina to take the doubles point off them. How big is that for your momentum going into the singles? Yeah, I mean, uh, doubles is very important for us. Um, I think we've been one of the better teams in the country in doubles this season, last season. So uh, we won the doubles point against them in the regular season last year. Uh, actually, I, I mean, it, despite our success in doubles this year, we actually haven't uh, particularly played well, but, uh, you know, by, by our standards maybe. But today, I think we met those expectations, and hopefully that can continue into singles. What is uh, the overall message that you've given to your team now heading into singles against North Carolina? I mean, honestly, not that much. I think these are the easy matches for people to be ready for. And uh, I think the biggest thing is for us to be together and to be a team. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can, uh, you know, get the crowd involved in our favor, <laughs> which I think is key. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we managed to do that, and hopefully we can keep that going. Well, Coach, congratulations on taking the doubles point. As you know, lots more work still to come. We look forward to watching it. Good luck to you in the singles. All right, cheers. We'll take a commercial. That's head coach Simon Earnshaw of the NC State Wolfpack, who have taken the doubles point from the number one seed, North Carolina. Singles is next when we come back to the 2023 ACC Women's Tennis Championship match. So far, a banner day for the NC State Wolfpack, making their first ever appearance in the ACC Women's Tennis Championship match, have taken the doubles point by winning at number two and three doubles over the top-seeded and unbeaten North Carolina Tar Heels. So it's NC State that will take a one-love lead in this first to four ACC Tennis Championship match here at the Cary Tennis Park in Cary in North Carolina. Here are the rules from college tennis. As I mentioned, North Carolina State took the doubles point because they took two of the doubles matches. They have one point. First team to reach four points clinches the match and the ACC championship. And we're about ready to get underway with six singles matches. Each of them equally important, worth one point each. And here's a look at the matchups. And it's hard not to put a spotlight on that number one, because at number one singles, North Carolina boasts the number one player in the nation, and Fiona Crawley. But on the other side of the net, the 88th ranked women's tennis player in the world at the moment. Diana Schneider, the freshman from Moscow, who got to the second round of the Australian Open in January through qualifying, took out the number 15 player in the world in Charleston just a few weeks ago. Crawley and Sh Diana Schneider have not played each other because when they played a dual match on April 6th, which North Carolina won seven love, by the way, Schneider was playing in the WTA event in Charleston, South Carolina. 
This should be a lot of fun. So Fiona Crawley will come into this match with only one loss this season. And here's a look at the junior from San Antonio, Texas, behind that pole with the uh, Yonex racket with the red strings. And there she is, a two-time indoor team champion because North Carolina's been winning everything. And she, I mean, look, 75 and 40 in dual <laughs> matches. It's absolutely incredible. She's been deemed a little energizer, Bunny. She uh, she's great footwork, such great intensity. You think she's spending so much energy, but she never gets tired from the first point to the last. She's such a great competitor, makes a lot of balls, and can really make the opponent beat yourself. And on the other side of the net is Diana Schneider. And, and one of the questions about Crawley is as great as she is at the college level, there's got to be some questions. How will she stack up against the pros? Well, we're going to find out today because she is playing a true pro-level tennis player, top 100 straight into the majors player and Diana Crawley. And by the way, there is no warm-up in these singles. They go straight into the action. And we are just about ready to go. There's a look at Diana Schneider, the freshman a three-time junior slam winner in doubles. She's also reached some slam singles finals. I mean, we're talking about a top-notch player here. And Fiona Crawley of North Carolina, top-ranked player in the ITA standings to serve. What's the key for Schneider to, to beat someone like Crowley who doesn't usually give you much, even though we saw her double fall, but normally she's not going to make a lot of errors, right? She is going to be trying to hit a lot. Excuse me. Schneider's going to be hitting a lot of aggressive and powerful shots, and I think it's going to be coming down to great margin and good targets. Because you know that Crowley is going to be making a lot of balls today, and so Schneider just has to do a really good job with maintaining that calm aggression, if you will, but also give herself a lot of margin. about Fiona is that she is able to transition from offense, from defense to offense quite often and try and get her feet into the blue, if you will. number one singles match for North Carolina State. Action on all six courts getting underway in the 2023 ACC Women's Tennis Championship match. And just a reminder that NC State has taken the doubles points, so they lead one love. First team to get four points. That's win four matches now. We'll become ACC champions. We'll be checking in on all of these courts. 
as we move along, as Reese Brantmeyer and Alana Smith get going at number two, Carson Tangeleg and Amelia Rayeski at number three. And we'll get back to four. Diana Schneider just ripping that inside in forehand. And she did just such a good job with making sure to get around it with her feet, was aggressive with her footwork, but gave herself a lot of space on that forehand. This is gonna be interesting. Something I noticed right there in that first point of this game, probably threw a little shape into that forehand. Try to get it out of the strike zone of Schneider's forehand. defensive skills there by Crawley. Just moving to all areas of the court. Diana Schneider knew that she had to come up with something. Just missed wide on that overhead, but you can see it straight up, how many balls she can retrieve. transition from defense to offense and find that inside out opening and attack that Schneider forehand, hitting, making her hit that running forehand. You're gonna see a combination of yells and spins from Crowley in exaltation and also when she's upset. Yeah, we did mention she's a little energizer bunny. Yeah. <laughs> Plus one on the backhand side for Carly. Fantastic target there. Didn't have to go for the corner, just gave herself enough space to get inside the service line. opportunity to see her level against the top 100 player in the world. Schneider's got a target on her back every time she steps on the court in college tennis, I would think. Absolutely, but if you think about it, Fiona does as well. When you're number one, you have a huge target on your back. She's only lost one match this season, so all eyes are on both of these girls, essentially. Oh, that is 
just an outstanding display from the Tar Heel number one. Fantastic job there by Fiona. Just once again, choosing so such great targets and giving herself so much margin and making Schneider come to net and just such a great choice with that lob. the one thing that Schneider does so well. The moment she sees a short ball, she does so well to get her feet up to the ball, give herself time. Also great shot selection on that inside out backhand. Return sails long. Crawley holds for 2-1. That number one singles, NC State out to a one-love lead after taking the doubles point. Singles up and running here in Cary. Stages of the singles competition here at the 2023 ACC Women's Tennis Championship. NC State took the doubles point. They lead one love over North Carolina, but the Tar Heels have the lead early stages of the first set in all six of these singles match courts. Let's go back to number one singles where Diana Schneider the freshman from Moscow serves for NC State at 1 2. And it's worth reiterating that while the doubles was one set, this is best two out of three, no ad scoring, and let serves are in play. that let serves are in play. Diana Schneider is the fortunate recipient of a let ace. You don't see that a whole lot though. You don't and you have to wonder, I've heard rumors that they do want to transition that rule into the pros, but we shall see. <laughs> what do you think? Would you like to see it transitioned into the pros? I think it would be fun. I just, there's a lot of players that just don't think it would be right for the game of tennis. But I think for fans, I think it just adds another layer of fun. And it moved things along a little bit quickly too. I tend to think watching a lot of tennis, a lot of aces, more aces are taken away by lets, especially in the men's game, than on one on lets, if I that agree. makes sense just nicks the top of the net. It's like, come on. I think there is a, more of a disparity in the amount of lets there are in the men's side compared to women's, too. show a little visible frustration here. Just got a little tentative there once at net. 
but you can just see that grit and determination to make it unreachable for Crawley and just what it means to Schneider. Love the fist pump afterwards. just long off the racket of Schneider. And here comes our first deciding point of this first set. Crawley with the opportunity to choose her return side. And for a minute, it looked like she was gonna walk to the ad court, but it makes a whole lot of sense for her to stand in that deuce court against the lefty Schneider. It's a little bit curious, she actually asked her assistant coach there, Tyler Thompson, which side should I take? shots but just a little bit more shape just gives it a little bit of uncomfortable position there for Crawley. with her footwork and into the court. Well, you can feel the intensity and you can certainly hear it in the voices of this dual partisan crowd. So Crowley called the ball on the baseline out. The chair umpire overruled and said, no, that caught the line. Point goes to NC State. And Crawley puts her hands up and says, sorry. variety. I know we talked about how 
these girls are hitting so flat, so flat. You see it so often, but I'd love to maybe just see a little change up with a slice or something. Just give a different look. Strength on strength at this point. And Schneider getting the better of that exchange. And break points now for the NC State number one. drop shot from Crawley that Schneider just ate for lunch. <laughs> and she takes a 3-2 lead for NC State at number one singles. Well, you mentioned you wanted to see a little variety. <laughs> That's probably not the yeah. way she drew it up. I don't think she wanted to hit that shot. Maybe just a little bit indecisive there with that slice. But Schneider once again doing such a good job with getting her feet up to the ball. All right, so we'll bounce away from number one singles for the moment with NC State up 3-2. Take a look at the number two singles court, Reese Brantmeyer of North Carolina. At this change of ends, holds a 3-2 lead on Alana Smith of NC State. And there's Alana Smith, the grad student from Fort Washington, Maryland. 17-4 and four in ACC play this year, Smith. 21-5 and five overall. A three-time doubles All-American. Reese Brantmeyer in the near court. The number one recruit in the 2022 recruiting class. Didn't play in the fall for North Carolina because she was playing ITF events. And she has stepped in at 10 and one in ACC play this season for the Tar Heels. practicing with her a couple of years ago. We were getting ready for the US Open and I just remember being so impressed with her game, the way she's able to produce so much on both sides and very athletic, loves to get around, hit that big forehand and she's really enjoyed being on that, in that team culture and she's playing some fantastic tennis. With Brantmeyer out to the 4-2 lead here in the first, it's worth mentioning that North Carolina needs to win four of the six singles matches to win the ACC championship here after the Wolfpack took the doubles point. So NC State only needs to win three. They can go with a split in singles and win the ACC championship. placement there by Smith, just getting enough slice on the top of the racket there on that serve, but Brent Meyer might have just given her position up a little bit too early there. Smith didn't play at all in the spring of 2022 after suffering an injury late in 2021. She 
he's got points now to get one step closer to Brent Meyer here in set number one, court number two. That's a big first serve from Alana Smith, who holds, but it's Reese Brantmeyer, who still leads four games to three in the opening set at number two singles. So let's take a look around the grounds with all the scores going on right now. Remember, North Carolina dropped the doubles point, so they need four of these singles matches. These are best two out of three sets. Tight at one singles. Brent Meyer with a break at number two. NC State, Rieski has a break of serve, leading four games to two at three singles. Tight all the way around here on just about all of these courts. We're going to jump back into the number one singles court. Fiona Crawley, top ranked player in the nation for North Carolina. 11 and 1 in ACC play, 19 and 1 in dual matches, 36 and 1 on the season. She's in the far court, returning to Diana Schneider, who only is ranked 88th in the world. <laughs> in the world, I said. That's one of the reasons why. And a 4 2 lead for the Wolfpack freshman. That was just amazing coverage there on that forehand. Just once again, giving it a little bit extra by getting forward and seeing the opportunity. The moment the ball was short, she really attacked it with her feet. And uh, you know, we mentioned the fact that she's also playing on the Pro Tour. Coach Simon did mention just how a lot of people just don't know what she's been dealing with, you know, in terms of staying, in terms of going. and. You know, not being able to go back to Russia, her hometown. That's just terrific tennis from Crawley. Great defense from Schneider. I got to imagine that NC State has provided the family atmosphere that Schneider simply cannot have at the moment. Do you get that feeling too? Absolutely. That's the one thing that she has mentioned is the fact that her coaches at NC State have come through with everything they promised her. And that's why she's just enjoying so much that team culture atmosphere and just really enjoying the ride, if you will. shape on that to get it unreachable for Crawley. And you can see here just a little extra shape on that Schneider forehand. That 
forehand when she unleashes the fury. It is a sight to behold. I'm so impressed with the amount of levels that she's got on that forehand. You know, she's able to use the slice, she's able to hit shape, and then she can do that where she just gives it a little bit more power on that wrist and does such a good job with giving herself great targets there. Massive point here now. A deciding point at 2-4 with Crawley serving and Schneider electing to return from the deuce court, which, by the way, is the side she plays in doubles as well. So she may be more comfortable simply returning from that side in general. But here we go. The difference between 3-4 and 5-2 on this point right here. Schneider forehand creating the damage. And the Wolfpack have taken a 5-2 lead at number one singles. Jumping over to number three, where NC State is leading 5-3 in the first set. With Carson Tangeleg serving to stay in this first set. Emilia Rieski returning. The junior from Nottingham, England. Oh. Ray Husky jumping all over that second serve. Doing such a good job with getting around that forehand. Once again, giving herself enough space. Didn't look uncomfortable or tight there. Now two points from the set. And again, it's the forehand return that does the damage and two set points for NC State at number three singles. Jetski just doing such a good job with applying so much pressure off the return. You have to think that Tangley wants that first serve. You have to focus on making sure you get a first serve here. <laughs> and that's the set for NC State as Tangley Blows the bunny right into the net on the short overhead, and NC State takes the first set at number three singles. Now let's jump over to number one singles, where Diana Schneider is serving for the first set against Fiona Crawley. Great serve there by Schneider. I think it just caught the back of the line there. Yeah, Fiona turned and asked if it was out. It was not. <laughs> Glimmer of hope. Yeah. 
Oh, what an incredible angle there by Schneider. Just taking, once again, a little bit off it and almost going right past neutral on that forehand. Great position here. Set points now for NC State. Three, should she, should she need them? That forehand has been the weapon of choice, and it has taken Diana Schneider to the first set over the NCAA number one, the world number 88. Wins at 6-2. Once again, Schneider just doing such a good job with moving the ball around on that forehand. And look at what it means to her. Firing up the team just gives you so much confidence and you're, if you're in the other courts listening to that roar. Coming to the business end of set number one on court number two. Let's check in on Reese Brantmeyer of North Carolina. As she tries to give the Tar Heels some good news. Grant Meyer's gonna serve for the first set. She leads 5-4 over Alana Smith right there. Out of Fort Washington, Maryland. I asked Coach Simon about Alana Smith and the one thing he said, she's the most laid back person you'll ever see. And you can see that from her tennis as well. season. They only got taken to 4-3 once all year, and that was against Virginia Tech. When Coach Kalbus actually rotated his lineup that day to give some of his players a bit of a rest, and they still managed to beat the Hokies. But other than that, almost all their dual matches have been pretty lopsided. Not today. Not in the ACC championship match. NC State has come to play. Two points from the set now, Reese Brantmeyer on court two. Pose coming forward. Big kicker from Grant Meyer, and three set points now for the Tar Heels at number two. First set for North Carolina at number two singles. So the Wolfpack have a set in hand at number one and number three. UNC has taken the first set at number two singles. Everything else is fairly tight. Elizabeth Scotty's gonna try to finish out the first set at number five. We're gonna take a quick break and we will be right back to the 2023 ACC Women's Tennis Championship match.
back here at the Cary Tennis Park in Cary, North Carolina. Russ Thaler and Irina Falcone joined by ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips. And Mr. Commissioner, great to have you along with us on a picture-perfect day for the Incredible. ACC Women's Championship match. Yeah. Thank you to you, Russ, and Irina. Nobody does it better than you do. How about the competition today? Has it been exceptional or what? Yeah, All week long. Look, you got the best team in the country, and you got NC State for their first time. But not only that, you have eight ACC teams in the top 25 in women's tennis. That's got to make you feel It really good. does. It's a commitment by our schools, our presidents and athletic directors, and then just some tremendous coaches recruiting incredible talent. And I hope we can get maybe 10 or 11 into the NCAA tournament when you, when you talk about eight ranked in the top 25, and then we have two or three just on the outside. And you also have 10 women that are in the top 25 in the country in national rankings. It's the best tennis conference in the country, bar none. Look, we're back here in Cary, North Carolina for the first time since 2019. We'll know we'll be here this year. We'll know we'll be here next year. What an amazing facility to hold this event. It really is. Cary has done such a great job. We look forward to finishing today with our women's championship and followed by our men's championship and then be back here, Russ, as you indicated, the last two years. The crowd here is exceptional, and uh, they love tennis in this part of the country and, uh, and all across our footprint in the ACC. But we're really thankful for the people of Cary and how w welcoming they've been to our teams. And speaking about being all over the country, you've been traveling a lot, going all over the country, different events and different places. I'm just curious, what do you think it's attractive for upcoming juniors choosing an ACC school? You're a perfect example, Irina. <laughs> your, your incredible accomplishments at Georgia Tech Thank you. and then taking it on to a professional career. I think for the ACC, you, you both have indicated throughout the week this opportunity to have world-class education and academics and also world-class athletics and play at the very elite level. And so as you look at juniors that are playing, the, the marriage of those two areas are as good as anybody has in the country. Not only are we seeing some of the best college tennis has to offer, we're seeing some world-class tennis here at the ACC Women's Tennis Championship. This is the commissioner, Jim Phillips. Mr. Commissioner, thank you thank so you. much. When we come back, we're getting Thanks. right back to the action. NC State and UNC for the ACC Women's Tennis Championship. Back to the 2023 ACC Women's Tennis Championship match. North Carolina and NC State. The Wolfpack took the doubles point. We are at the business end of set number one at four and five singles. We're at number four singles for North Carolina. North Carolina now serving for both of these sets. So let's just stick around for a sec and see what's happening. On the left-hand side in the near quarter is Abby Forbes of the Tar Heels at 15 all after that beautiful backhand winner. She takes on Abigail Rancelli, the junior from Sarasota, Florida. And on the right-hand side of your screen, it's Sophie Abrams serving to stay in the first set against Elizabeth Scotty of North Carolina. Abrams in the near court serving. Great job there by Sophie Abrams seeing the short ball and making sure to hit a swing volley, not let the ball drop, take time away from Scotty. That number five singles there. We'll keep you updated on court five as we head over to number four, where Abby Forbes of UNC is now two points away from taking this first set at 30-15. Play there by Rinchelli, seeing that Forbes was way behind the baseline and 
not going too much on the drop shot, but just making sure to follow it in after hitting it. And you can see here, she gets Forbes off the court, almost off our screen, but once again, just giving herself margin on that drop shot, and making sure to go to the open court, follow it in. A huge moment in this match right now at 5-4-30 all. And now set points coming for Abby Forbes. This dual match is as tight as can be at the moment. <laughs> NC State took the doubles point. And the Wolfpack have won the first set on two of the six courts in singles. And that's just wide. Here comes a deciding point. It's the difference between a set in hand or five all in the first. The stakes could hardly be higher at the moment. And a double fault from Abby Forbes. Two set points by the wayside, two unforced errors. That's New probably, life for Rinchelli. That's probably not the way that she wanted to play that last game. Oh. Just a little bit of a pressure moment situation. She is playing in her hometown here in Raleigh and bit disappointing, but impressive job by Rinchelli, just staying so tough out there. starting to pile up now for Abby Forbes. This is one of those times if you're the assistant coach or the coach, you want to get over to your player and make sure to tell them to slow things down and just take it point by point and maybe just make a couple more balls and apply a little bit more pressure on your shot tolerance. Abigail Rincelli was a singles All-American in 2022, reaching the quarterfinals of the NCAA tournament in singles. Just the second singles All-American in NC State history, Abigail Rincelli. In the round of 16, which got her into the quarters, which made her an All-American, she beat the defending national champion, Emma Navarro of the University of Virginia at the Nationals last year. So we know Rancelli's high end, pretty darn high. See the unforced errors just piling on for Forbes right now. Once again, you have to just make sure to tell yourself, take it one point at a time. It can change so quickly as we know, but you don't want to just be giving unforced errors at this point of the match.
double from Rancelli. Still three points for a 6-5 lead. By the way, the wind's starting to pick up here in Cario just a little bit. Shelly's starting to miss her mark just a little bit as well. It's still Just an absolute lung buster of a point. And Abby Forbes has dug out of a 40-love hold. And now we have a deciding point here at 5-all in the first set. What a massive point that was for us. It was just, you could see that there was a lot of nerves from both players there. And Rinchelli just tried to go for that drop shot. Maybe didn't do enough with the lob and maybe a little tentative on that forehand. but. I'm sure Coach Simon is in her ear right now just telling her, hey, you played. That was a very good point. You have to keep doing what you're doing. Keep that aggression and that calm demeanor about you. Big point right here. Digs all the way back from 40 Love and will have a second opportunity to serve for the first set at number four singles. Abigail Rancelli is not liking the call on the baseline. Forbes made the call and the chair umpire upheld it, so it's 6 5 to North Carolina. We need to take a look at all the scores right now. And remember, North Carolina State won the doubles point, so they need to win three of the singles matches. Well, they're in control at number one singles, up a set and a break. They're in control at number three singles, up a set and 5-1, which is where we take you now. With North Carolina State's Amelia Rayeski serving for the match. and the point for the Wolfpack. It's 30-15 here at 
after that double fault. Two points away from another point for the Wolfpack. Carson Tangling trying to hold on here in the near court. And a oh. let <laughs> ace brings us to match point on court three. The sophomore from Alpharetta, Georgia, facing down elimination here against the junior from Nottingham, England. And Amelia Rayeski has given NC State a two-love lead in the 2023 ACC Women's Tennis Championship match. They are halfway home to their first ever ACC Tournament Championship. Just very comprehensive there by Amelia Rojewski. And that's the same reaction she had yesterday when she clinched the match against Georgia Tech to bid them here into the finals day. And you can just see how happy she is to be able to sit on court and cheer on her teammates and the rest of the team has got to be feeling a lot more confident going continuing today this is by far the most adversity that north carolina has faced all season 29 and 0 as a team coming into this championship match back on court number one the number one ranked college tennis player in the nation fiona crawley Serving down a set and one three. That was just so good. And that was break point, and now Schneider is up 6 2 4 1 in this match against the number one player in the nation. So as Schneider has control at number one, we move over to number two, where North Carolina took the first set, 6-4. And Reese Brantmeyer holds a 3-2 lead in the second set over Alana Smith of NC State. North Carolina trying to get on the board here. Worth noting that NC State is yet to drop a point in this tournament. Number three seeds coming in. Four love winners in their quarter. Tar Heels in the Wolfpack. Fun fact, Russ, we actually played North Carolina when we won it in 2010. <laughs> played Sanaz Morand. It was my first ever clinch in the season to win the ACC title for the team. Pretty awesome memory to have. Oh, absolutely. It's my favorite college memory. one of the uh, just the marks on the resume that helped put you into the Hall of Fame at Georgia <laughs> Tech a couple years ago. I'll okay. pump your tires. While being eight months pregnant, too. That was a that? fun walk up there. <laughs> <laughs> I had heels on, too. Oh, Russ. goodness. That's your own fault. <laughs> <laughs> you did that to yourself. <laughs> that part. Only that part. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, now points for a 4-2 lead. Already up a set for Reese Brantmeyer. That's a big first serve, and now few points for a 4-2 lead. Oh, there it is. That is the point. Pardon me. A set in 4-2 for Reese Brentmeyer at number two for North Carolina. As the Tar Heels try to get on the board here in this championship match.
as a freshman, Reese Brantmeyer has just looked as though she's really coming to herself and she has that calm demeanor about her, which can really help a team just have that person that you know is going to get the job done and compete really well. And a lot of maturity from Reese Brantmeyer so far. now for Brantmeyer to take a 5-2 lead here in the second set. That's a double from Alana Smith. And that is a, I mean, Reese Brantmeyer's taking a look. That ball was clearly wide. And it's a 5-2 lead for Brantmeyer. Let's hop over to court number one, where Fiona Crawley is serving to stay in this match against Ann Schneider. And Schneider blows the backhand wide. But what a statement performance for the Wolfpack number one so far. Crawley only one loss this season, and this has been one-way traffic for the world number 88. by Schneider today. Just not a lot of hesitation, not having to do too much. And I think it's just a little bit too much firepower uh, for Crawley today. now for Diana Schneider. That number one singles. Leah Ma of the University of Georgia is the only person to defeat Fiona Crowley in 2023. Diana Schneider has two chances to become the second. point here at 1-5. It doubles as a match point for Schneider. 
who will elect to receive in the deuce court. taken out college tennis is number one by a score of 6-2, 6-1, and given NC State a free love lead in the ACC Women's Tennis Championship match. Absolutely incredible performance there by Schneider. And you can see, I think there's gonna be a lot of hugs after this match just very comprehensive today russ you could just see what makes her the number 88 player in the world on the wta tour let's jump over to number two singles and one last note on schneider she's ranked 88 in the world she's not defending any points going forward either that ranking can really only go up yep. at this point she's got roland garros after the ncaa's and wimbledon after that She'll be main of the next three majors, at least. Alana Actually. Smith has really dropped her energy level towards the end of this set number two. As Reese Brantmeyer looks to put NC State on the board. Uh, excuse me, North Carolina on the board. And here come the match points for the Tar Heels. And there it is. Reese Brantmeyer has put North Carolina on the board with a straight set win over Alana Smith of NC State at number two singles. So North Carolina trails 1-3 with three matches still ongoing. Heck of a performance from the freshman from Whitewater, Wisconsin. And with NC State leading 3-1, they only need to win one more match to clinch the ACC championship. But it is as tight as can be with tie breaks going on right now in the first set at number four and number six. Sophie Abrams took the first set and leads 2-1 in the second at number five. Elizabeth Scotty is gonna have to come back from a set down if North Carolina is gonna have a chance to win the ACC championship. NC State, a match win away from taking their first ever ACC title. We are back at the Cary Tennis Park in Cary, North Carolina as things are tightening up. And the ACC Women's Tennis Championship matches we're looking in on the four five and six matches. The four match and six match are in first set tie breaks. And at number five, between Elizabeth Scotty of North Carolina and Sophie Abrams, it's Abrams who took the first set and Scotty serving at one, two in the second set. Scotty's gonna need to come back from a set down if North Carolina has a chance because NC State won the doubles point and they've already locked up number one and number three singles to take a 3-1 lead. And the first to four wins the championship. Let's go in to court number five. This is Elizabeth Scotty in the near court of North Carolina. And Sophie Abrams in the far court. Scotty has just held for two all in the second set. Thaler and Arena Falcone on the call here in Cary.
So Abrams has a 3-1 lead and looks to have all the momentum. This could be the clinching match for the ACC championship. Should Abrams hold on here in the second set? I know it's a set 3-1-30 love, but my heart is pounding so much. I'm so invested right now. Frustration showing from the senior from Annapolis, Maryland, Elizabeth Scotty of North Carolina. Calm as can be, Sophie Adams. A junior from Germantown, Tennessee. Just seven and five in the ACC during the season, but this might be. This could be the most memorable win of her career, judging by your history, Arena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, there's nothing like winning a team championship, let me tell you. traffic right now on court number five as Sophie Abrams is up a set and 4-1 on Elizabeth Scotty. A win for the Wolfpack would be a conference championship clincher. And we're staying on this court because this is the one that matters at the moment. Brian Kelbus is in there talking with his charge. In fact, you got both coaches out there. They know the gravity of the moment. So NC State for the first time advancing to the ACC Women's Championship match in tennis. Looking to complete their first ever ACC title against a team that has been nothing short of a juggernaut this year in North Carolina, 29 and 0 on the season. They haven't been pushed like this all year. They hadn't lost the doubles point before today since the opening match of their ACC campaign at the very beginning of this season. But on this day, the Wolfpack have risen to the occasion, winning on courts one and three, and now up a set in 4-1 at court five. How hard is it, Irina, to close out a match like this? If you're in Sophie Abrams' shoes, there have to be some nerves on that side of the net, right? Absolutely, I mean, right now you have to think that her coach In that changeover, you have to imagine that the coach was just letting her know, hey, just stay in the moment. Just really just focus on what you've been doing correctly. Focus on what has been working. And that's the one thing I noticed about Abrams yesterday is she's not trying to give up any of the baseline. And she does so well and really timing it well from both sides. just see that Scotty is in full defensive mode right now because Abrams has absolutely no hesitation in coming forward. She likes and, and is very comfortable at net. Once again, that calm demeanor about her. 
Very impressive given the moment. And now points for a set and 5-1 for Sophie Abrams. No hesitation on that forehand return and once again gave herself so much margin. Great target on the return. One game away for the NC State Wolfpack from their first ever ACC Women's Tennis Championship. And now the rest of the squad, all the players who are either completed their matches or aren't in the singles lineup along with the support staff and the coaches, they are all lining the side of this match court number five in anticipation of Sophie Abrams trying to serve out the title. She's been able to show her abilities to turn that defense into offense and once again does not want to get up any square footage of that baseline. was a very close call, Russ. <laughs> that might have clipped. I would have challenged that. exuding from the teammates there, getting Sophie Abrams just so fired up. So tough to stay calm, but also be so fired up at the same time, Russ.
points for Sophie Abrams, championship points for the NC State Wolfpack. Head coach Simon Earnshaw looking on, arms folded. For the first time in school history, NC State women's tennis are ACC champions. What an absolute moment for the Wolfpack. Tough match for Elizabeth Scotty, but just pure determination and grit and calm aggression for the NC State Wolfpack today. Lift that trophy to the sky, ladies. You've earned it. NC State have slayed the dragon. North Carolina were unbeaten on the season coming in. And the Wolfpack left no doubt. Absolutely incredible performance by everyone. It's going to be a gut-wrenching loss there for Elizabeth Scotty, but what a season they've had so far. And it still continues. North Carolina, the number one ranked team in the nation coming into this event. They will be one of the favorites for sure heading into the NCAA tournament. But this day and this tournament and that trophy belong to the NC State Wolfpack. What a comprehensive performance, starting with the doubles point at number one singles. Honestly, a pro level, a top pro level performance by Diana Schneider to take out college tennis's top ranked player who had only lost once previously this season, two and one. And that sort of set the tone for the entire day, no? Absolutely. Like you said, it started off with that doubles point and it was in doubles two and three. They really took at it and got two and early lead very early on and you can just see coach Simon what it means to him and what it means to the team to be in this position after that coveted ACC title but once again an incredible season so far for UNC but today it was all about the NC State Wolfpack. Congratulations to head coach Simon Earnshaw and the NC State Wolfpack. One more look at the moment of serendipity when Sophie Adams completed her win at number five singles and the clinching point as NC State takes out college tennis's top ranked team, North Carolina. 4-1, your final score. And for the first time in school history, NC State women's tennis put that ring on the finger. They are your 2023 ACC Women's Tennis Champions. We welcome in the head coach of the 2023 ACC Women's Tennis Championship team, Simon Earnshaw. Coach, congratulations. What is going through your mind as you watch that last ball sail long in the five match and Sophie Abrams comes away with the win and you know you've won the title? So, um, what's going through my mind is I didn't actually see it. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I wasn't really aware of the score in the uh, last game. I mean, when, you know, you can't see the, the, the game score. So, I think the, the biggest thing for me was, is, you know, I've, I haven't been in this situation potentially in Division 1, but I've, I've been in this situation a lot in Division 2. I just wanted to keep us going there at four and six, because you just never know, right? And uh, you know, today we were lucky that we, uh, we we actually capitalized on our lead. It's amazing, really amazing. Great for Sophie. Sophie's been struggling for a while, but she stepped up massively today. And uh, yeah, I mean, this whole group—it's been a long, long road. I mean, 
you know, my first year here, we're one and 13 in the ACC, and you know that had been that way for 40 odd years, and uh, yeah, here we are, crazy. Congratulations, Coach Simon, on your first ACC team championship. You've got to be feeling absolutely elated. You mentioned yesterday about being a progressive team and wanting to be more instinctive on the court, and the team came through for you. What does this, what does this mean to you and your family? Oh, well, I mean the team's family as well, um, and we've been through this. You know, particularly Alana. Alana was out injured last year, couldn't play. It's the first time I've ever had a player miss a season out injured for so her coming back for the fifth year. Uh, I think she, you know, she was a little tight, but today, but uh, you know, the team stepped up, and yeah, I mean, amazing. I mean, we came here and believed in this. You know, Debbie Yao, Michael Lippitz, and now Boo. And Colin really, you know, believed that we had something at NC State. People told me it couldn't be done, and there was no chance, or I was crazy to come here, but, I mean, here we are, right? Hey, look. And, hey, all those ADs that didn't hire me back then when I was in Division Two. how about this then? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. right. No doubt. Yes. Hey, look, we'll be talking about this forever at NC State. To be the first, there's only one. You guys are the first. How are you going to celebrate this title? I feel like I need the, I need the breast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have my parents are over from the UK. It's the first time they've ever actually seen college tennis in person. So really special moment there. And, uh, you know, we will. Yeah, I think I think I'll do the opposite of celebrate. I'll just calm down. You know <laughs> what? Nice. You have earned it. Your team has earned it. Coach, congratulations again. Go celebrate with your team. All right. Cheers. Go pack. <laughs> pause, pause, pause. attention to the court where we will now present the 2023 Women's Tennis Championship Awards. Presenting today's awards will be ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips. First, let's hear it for our championship match participants, the NC State Wolfpack and UNC Tar Heels. Next, we would like to recognize the 2023 ACC Women's Championship Most Valuable Player, Diana Schneider from North Carolina State University. And now, the 2023 ACC Women's Tennis Championship team members, please come forward when your name is read and receive your mini trophy. Sophie Abrams. Gina Ditterman. <laughs> Chloe Henderson. <laughs> Nell Miller.
Amelia Rieski. Abigail Rancelli. Diana Schneider. <laughs> Alana Smith. And Anya Zironova. And the team championship trophy is presented to Coach Simon Urshaw. Congratulations, Coach Simon Urshaw and the NC State Wolf Pack. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Atlantic Coast Conference, we thank you for your support of AC Tennis. Have a good afternoon and drive home safely. Well, there's a moment that'll be captured for all of poster posterity, NC State. A picture that will live on forever, a first of its kind, NC State women's tennis champions of the ACC in 2023. Irina, what do you make of what we just witnessed from NC State? It was truly incredible. The NC State Wolfpack was able to do something extraordinary today. They played with pure confidence, grit, and that undeterred determination. But not only did they beat a rival, but they beat an undefeated team in front of family and friends. And let me tell you, winning a team championship is like no other. And today is a day that everyone on this team will remember forever. It was an all Carolina ACC championship match. The unbeaten Tar Heels, ranked number one in the nation coming in, hadn't been pressed. They beat NC State 7-0 earlier this season in a dual match. But on this day, in this place, the Cary Tennis Park in Cary, North Carolina, NC State showed up and showed out, winning the doubles point and winning the necessary singles matches to take it by a score of 4-1 and for the first time ever. NC State Wolfpack, women's tennis, ACC champions. Congratulations to Coach Earnshaw and the pack on a day that just must be too sweet.